G'day friends, welcome to the Concepts Stamp Series. If you've been around on this channel for any period of time, you might have come across a whole playlist of stamp series videos that I made back in 2017. Those were for the first release of my uh, first four stamp sets. Then I added the blokes after that. We did a bit of a Tag Tuesday with the blokes. I had a cute little two by six stamp set called She's Three Faced. We looked at that on Playtest Patreon last year. And this year, as I was getting ready to go to Creativation, I wanted to create a new stamp set just to play with at the booth. Now, I had no idea people would be interested in it. I certainly didn't think people would want to buy it because truth be told, I was kind of making myself a way to cheat my drawings as I was demoing. I thought if I could stamp out my faces and then build on top of them, I wouldn't really have to do any of the drawing and get nervous about getting it wrong in front of people. So I decided to create this stamp set to demo with and lo and behold, some people actually wanted to use it. So we made it a full stamp set. I did go back in and redo some things. Like I took the top of this head off because it was just a less detailed version of this head. So I felt like you didn't need that top since it didn't have the hairline on this one. I took this down from the shoulders and added a full waist and hips as well as straightened up her head. And I also added in a few extra motifs or uh, building blocks to play with because I thought it was just missing a couple things, specifically this kind of teardrop shape and the twigs. I found myself adding a lot of twigs to my drawings and I thought, you know what, I just need the stamp. And a bone, honestly, I don't know why. I've been asked this question already. Why did you put a bone in there? I don't know. I just couldn't help myself. I felt like it would make sense. I'm gonna be doing a lot of experimenting with the bone and just see what I can come up with and I'll be sure to share the results with you. So the actual stamp set itself is called Concepts because what this was made for is to kind of conceptualize a piece, you know, low key trying to help me cheat my drawings. But at the same time, I think it is a really great thing to play with, not even when you're learning how to illustrate, but even as a competent illustrator, there's something different that happens when you're collage stamping these building blocks together. It is almost like this weird kind of puzzle play. I get so excited to stamp things out everywhere and see the different combinations I can come up with. It's super quick because I don't have to draw out every single motif and then erase it and then, you know, reposition it and then what if I've got one eye wonky and I don't know what to do? You know what I mean? It is such a great blueprint to start with. And that's something that I looked at right back at the start when I was creating stamp sets. I wanted blueprints because I'm not actually much of a stamper. I don't really do card making or scrapbooking in the traditional sense. Even a lot of what I do in art journaling is just drawing. So when I come to stamps, I want it to be an extension of what I already enjoy doing. So I figured that if I could get people illustrating on top of their stamps, that would be a really great thing. A lot of through 2018, we were looking at collaging illustrations together, whether it was popping them in the photocopier and then redrawing over them or just direct referencing a collage you put together. I feel like there's just a different part of your brain that's activated when you're collaging rather than trying to pull reference or trying to recall from your memory how to draw these specific things. And whilst there are motifs that are very obvious, like these lashes and these twigs, there are also some things that are a little bit more nondescript, like this circle with the cutout, this arch shape here that I've put in as a mermaid scale. Even these I put in as feathers, but if you color them in yellow, they look like bananas. <laughs> well, honestly, I think it was because my example, I had put yellow all over it and she looked like a banana showgirl. These are actually stickers I made, honestly, for no reason. I wanted these stickers, but I did put a bunch of extra in the shop. Funnily enough, these were made with the concept stamp set that I was demoing at the show. Like most of these stickers here were made with that. And today we are looking at how to create this one right here. So I think that's enough chat. I'm getting way too excited because I've been anticipating this video for a few weeks now and I'm finally here to do it. So I want to do a really good job. I got a couple stamping blocks here and I've also got a Tim Holtz Distress Ink in antique linen. The trick to concept stamping, not so much a trick, but I guess the technique you'll want to use I'm going to take this head here with the hairline is using a light colored ink. You want something light and you don't necessarily need the clearest impression in the world. I'm working on some cold pressed watercolor cardstock. So I already know it's going to be a little bit trickier to get a really clear impression on this, but I'm just going to stamp this on kind of tilt it off to the left a little bit and just about halfway down my page. When you're stamping, apply even pressure and just let it sit on the page for a second or two and then lift straight up. You don't really want to rock it or wiggle it because some of those finer line details will start to bleed out. I'm going to zoom you in because this is a light ink so I really want you to be able to see what we're doing. Before I go any further, I want to grab my Pilot Color Eno pencil and just on the outside of the lips and the nose, I'm going to run two little notches off the bottom of my chin. 
I'm gonna slightly curve the one on the right, and then like train tracks, I'm going to run the one on the left down as well. When I get to the bottom, I wanna scoop this out. And I also wanna scoop this one out as well. We're giving her a really long giraffe neck, just so we can add some detail on the body. When I'm about under the ears, I just wanna round off these shoulders and give it a nice semicircle shape, a nice curve to bring those shoulders together. Just giving her a little decolletage. <laughs> it's been a while since I've pulled out my fake French. And I do just wanna put that in there just for a, um, an extra space to work with. Whilst I've got my pencil here, I'm gonna notch in some little kiss curls. We're gonna go from the top of the ear and just run some back and forth lines. Some nice little curls popping off her face there. This is not essential, but I find it's a lot more whimsical. Right, that's all the drawing that we're gonna do for now. The rest of the drawing is actually just coloring and um, finishing details. So if you've managed to draw that, we're good. I've got this stamp here, which is almost like an acrylic finger. I don't know where this stamp block came from. I believe it was gifted to me, so I can't recommend that you uh, pick it up from somewhere in particular. Any stamp block will do. The, way, the reason I love this one is because it's like a finger. I can just tap it in this and start going, and that's why I think I go nuts with these things, because it's just so quick. I've tilted the head on an angle, so I'm gonna slightly angle my paper back so that it's facing me uh, straight on. I've got my little cherry blossom petal here. This is, funnily enough, one of the most versatile pieces in this entire set. I use it on everything. I'm gonna go straight up from the top of the nose and the lips to the top of the hairline and just pop that on. I'm gonna stamp this four more times. So on the outside of the eye, I just wanna angle it up a touch. She looks crazy right now, but it'll come together, I promise. <laughs> and then halfway between each petal, I wanna pop another one, just so that they're all facing out the same way. I'm gonna grab this lotus leaf here. Or did we call it a lotus leaf? We were on Instagram Live playing with this one. I feel like it was a lily pad or a lotus leaf. I'm not quite sure. When I did it, I was referencing a, um, a succulent that I drew from ages ago, <laughs> but I'm not quite sure what it was. I'm gonna go underneath the first cherry blossom petal and just connect it up so that it sits on the hairline like that. I'm gonna do that two more times underneath the cherry blossom petals next to it. So they're sitting on the head. We're essentially making this burst of little flowers, just an arrangement. Whilst I've got my lily pad lotus leaf, I'm gonna go down to the bottom of this bust here and put it right in the center as if it were the top of a, a dress or something. Now that I've got this reference, I'm gonna take my cherry blossom again and on either side towards the shoulders, I'm going to stamp a cherry blossom kind of cap sleeve. Next in the set, we're gonna grab this leaf shape that has a darkened outline. I'm gonna use the darkened outline facing the outside towards the top. I'm just going to envelope each of these cherry blossoms on top with two of these leaves fanning out sideways. Now you don't have to use a light ink color. The reason I do that is because I'm gonna do a watercolor wash over all of this and then I'm gonna put in all my details afterwards. But if you just wanted to stamp yourself out an illustration to color, I mean, you could just go straight in with an ink color that you already enjoy. I just also like the lighting because when I'm collaging it together, I don't wanna worry about masking. Masking is just way too many steps for me. So when I'm using a lighting, because I'm gonna come back over and illustrate it all, you'll find a lot of these things, even though they overlap, once you've lined over everything and, and redrawn it in, had your fun illustrating it, you're barely gonna notice the underworking lines because they're a lighter color and your eye will be more attracted to the darker outline. I think that was kind of one of the most fun things to show people at the show was that there were still outlines underneath these images. Like if you can see on this sticker, you can still see her hairline. Cause this was when I did Instagram live, I had to use a dark ink so people could see. So she's still got this red hairline under there. I think it was a dark pink. I've still got my leaf shape on. So I want to add that everywhere else. I'm going to add it just above these cherry blossoms down here. I'm gonna add it to the inside V of the cherry blossom. So don't be afraid to try and connect things up. In fact, you'll find that some of these things were designed to connect in a fun way. I don't wanna give away all the secrets just yet, but if you try stamping this over the eyes, you'll get some really interesting heavy eyeliner. <laughs> I specifically made that cutout shape enough for the eye to fit through. Last two leaves I'm going to add underneath this lily pad here, just fanning out. 
and that's enough of that one for me. The last one I'm going to grab, believe it or not, we're finished after this, is this tiny little leaf shape. Be careful not to lose this one because it is super tiny, but if you've got one of these finger stamp things, this is the most fun to add everywhere. So I'm going to add it between my little clusters of florals here. I mean, it just goes on so quick. It's such a thankless task. I'm gonna put it between my little cherry blossom and my leaf down on the shoulders. Such a great little filler too. I'm gonna put it on the outside of these cherry blossoms here. And things don't have to connect if you don't want them to. Remember, we are illustrating, so technically if this is too far away, you could put a little vine on it that connects back in. I'm gonna put some down here in this little negative space on the outside of these leaves, and then one right in the center just there. I'm gonna grab my Pilot Color Eno pencil again. I wanna draw a big oval that leaves this kind of cluster we've got down here, circles around the head, and then comes back in. This is gonna be kind of a framing device for our piece because I don't want this piece just to float on the page and just look a little decapitated. So sometimes I will add a big shape behind it and fill that with color. I'm gonna zoom you back out a little bit because I'm gonna be working with watercolor, I wanna fix my illustration to something that's very sturdy so I don't warp and buckle the paper. I've got this big wooden clipboard here. And for me today, the tape doesn't have to be neat just because I'm only coloring inside that oval. I'm not actually coloring outside to the edge. So I just wanna fix it down flat. I've got my trusty dusty watercolor palette here and I've got a big old craft smart brush it's not really gonna fit into my pans very well, but we'll try and make it work. <laughs> I'm gonna take a mixture of these light sandy colors, these light pink colors. I've got even this little coral color. And what I wanna do is just wash it over. I'm gonna leave my eyes. I'm going for a really loose coloring style today with um, cat hair in it. <laughs> Here I am thinking that these stamp series tutorials will be much more professional than the last ones and I'm literally painting with Bianca's cat hair, keeping it humble. I'm just placing down color and blocking it in. I don't really want to go too overboard trying to overcorrect everything. On the outside I'm going to just fill that space with my pink. Doesn't matter if I go over some of these flowers and florals, when we go to line it we can bring all of that back. I just want it to be very loose and natural and organic. And a lot of what I want to do is work wet into wet, just so that I can get some of that pigment floating around. Nice soft blends between things. Whilst it's still wet, I'm going to take some of this yellow here. I'm going to place that in the florals. Just let that blend together. I'm going to do that down on the body as well. Just adding in a pop of this really beautiful, rich yellow color. Keeping a very limited color palette, seeing as it's quite a loose illustration, or a bit of a loose coloring style, I should say. So I don't want to overwhelm myself with too many choices for color. I can always come back in and add some more colors to the shadows if I feel like it, or, you know, get really mixed media on it and add some more fun stuff. A touch more of that pink to make it a little more vibrant. One of the nice things about using a big brush is that it's really hard to overcorrect yourself. And if you find that there are some places that you just don't love, just blot them up with a paper towel. You can even use your paper towel to wick up some of that excess paint water. And it'll also give a nice little effect as well. A little bleached out look. Whilst this is still a little wet, I do want to put some extra color onto the face. So I'm just going to pop a little pink on her cheeks. And even a touch of this background pink color around her eyes. This doesn't have to be neat, I just want some color there. Might also just try and pop her lips in. If any of your details are too hard to see, then just grab your uh, stamp again and just stamp them right over the top. I know it's not a great um, demo to watch if all of the working lines disappear, <laughs> but I do want to show you, I mean, I've, I've shown before on Instagram Live, and um, you can even see a part of it in the Creativation blog. When I use a darker color, it's just really hard to get rid of all the uh, working lines underneath. It still definitely works and it'll be fine, so if you do want to use a darker color, don't feel like you can't. But I just really want to show you the full effect of the stamp set and, and how it's created to be the base and the blueprint for your illustrations. So I'm still adding a little bit of color around because as watercolor dries up, it does lighten up a little bit. Wherever I want a bit of a boost, a little bit of a punch, 
I'm going to drop some pigment into that area. And because it's wet, it will still feather and fan out and give me a really nice watercolor effect. While it is wet, if you wash your brush off and have a clean bit of water on the end, you can drop it into the background on some of these more heavily concentrated areas of pigment and it will start to move it around. It'll almost make like these little blossoms and blooms. So I do like to add that in just for some extra texture. Seeing as we're not going to be going too crazy with any kind of shading and rendering today, I want my watercolor to do a lot of the work for me. Okay, I just heat tooled it, but I want to reiterate, because it's been a long time since I've said this, when you heat tool watercolor, you have to be really careful because sometimes it will scorch it and it will distort the color and make it a lot darker, make it not as vibrant as it could be if you just let it air dry. Depending on how high the fan setting is on there, sometimes it will push the pigment around, kind of ruin the uh, watercolor effects that you have going on. So just be careful. The reason I do it is uh, because I don't have a lot of time to film <laughs> and uh, I need to get it dry so I can move on. But I would, if I wanted this to be really really, really vibrant and really, really beautiful and make sure that I got the full effect of the color and the texture of it, I would just let it air dry. Unfortunately, time is not my luxury at this point. So I'm gonna grab my Pilot Color Eno pencil and I'm just gonna go into the face and just start darkening up some of these areas that I want to keep. I'm gonna go around the chin, tracing over the blueprint that I see underneath. Now I drew these and I put them out there so I have no problem with you tracing over them. I know some people get a little nervous about that because they don't want to feel like they're copying or they're you know, not being genuine, but this is all about having fun and learning. And let's be real, if you change up a few of these lines, honestly, I've seen examples where I had no idea people even used the stem sets that I created. <laughs> these are a guide. These aren't so that you, you, know, you can create exactly what I've created. I mean, if you want to follow along, that's great too. And I, I totally encourage you to do whatever makes you happy. But they're a tool. It's like taking out all of the boring parts like you know getting your guides right and mapping things out and figuring out proportions properly and you know alignment it's it's taking out all of that guesswork it's giving you a blueprint to start with it's very nondescript there's not a lot going on on the faces other than the placement of features and even still this one has less detail there's no top eyelid there's no underneath there's less detail in the nose there's no top in the bottom of the mouth there's also no top of the head or the inner ear workings this is a really really blank one so there's a lot of room there for you to experience express yourself in a way that is personal to you that's going to make you feel comfortable with where you're at in uh, in your creativity and how you like to express that. If you have other stem sets that you want to use that you want to just try today's tutorial with, there's no problem with you doing that either. You do not have to buy these. As I like to say with everything I create, it's a non-essential. <laughs> you don't need it. You can live a great life without it. But if you want it, it's there for you. And there are tutorials to help. There's an online course coming that just gives away all the secrets. <laughs> I just want you to be able to play with this and, you know, conceptualize ideas. Map them out. Just give yourself references. You don't have to draw over the top. You could just be practicing something and then reference whatever you stamped together. You can just use parts of it. You don't even have to use a face. I could build an illustration with all the other parts and not the face. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's a challenge. Maybe I should do that for a video. But I've been drawing all my life and it kind of shocked me how much fun I had playing with these stamp sets. I thought I would just kind of enjoy it for like a day or two and then let go of it. But I've been putting them everywhere in my journals, in my diaries, in my planner, <laughs> you know. I have pieces that I kind of displayed on my on my little cabinet behind me because <laughs> I just had I had so much fun doing it. It's the process is so fun, I guess is what I want to say. So sometimes I stamp something out and I think it looks horrendous. Like if you saw on the Instagram live, I really hated the one I was doing on there. But then once it was finished, I actually really enjoyed it. So, you know, it's, it's a nice game of roulette. But isn't everything? Sometimes I'm drawing and I hate what I'm drawing. And other times I'm drawing and I think I don't like it and then suddenly I love it. And it takes me on a path to drawing that same thing for weeks and weeks and weeks. So right now I'm on this kick of stamping out these concepts and I feel like there's not enough time in the day to make as many samples as I want to make or as many videos as I want to make. I keep looking at the little motifs and thinking, oh, what if I had them in this arrangement? And then I try to stamp it out real quick and I think, that's great. Well, 
I need to do the other one that I just stamped out first. So I'll leave this one for later and then I think of another arrangement that I wanna do. So if you have some free time, please play for the both of us. <laughs> and I'll live vicariously through you. Okay, I've got this Pilot High Tech C Mica pen in a brown. This is a kind of a darker brown, but I don't want to outline in black because I think it'd be too harsh. I'm going to show you how I approach the details in each one, and then I'm going to outline the whole thing. So with the cherry blossoms, I'm going to trace the cherry blossom petal. I'm going to start from the middle at the bottom, and I'm going to trace a line that follows the outside one. So I almost double outlined it. Now I want to place some lines stemming from that center point at the bottom and just some dots in the middle. Wherever I stamped out a cherry blossom petal here, I'm going to do that detail. For the leaf next to it, I'm going to outline the outside. This one kind of disappears behind it, so I'm going to just connect it where I can see it. And then I'm going to trace the inside cutout part. This one's kind of easier because you can see both. I'm going to draw a line right down the center of that leaf and then diagonal lines that cross to meet each other in the center, all pointing up and out. So every time you see a leaf, I'm gonna do that detail, one of these bigger leaves. The smaller leaves, I'm actually just going to line in the way that they're stamped, so there's not much guesswork with that one. The only other detail we had on here was this lotus or this lily pad. I really need to figure out what it's called. I think it was a lily pad. <laughs> I'm going to outline the whole thing first as I see it. I'm not so much worried if I go outside of the lines or I make something a little bit bigger than I stamped it out. Sometimes I will purposefully draw it a lot looser and with a lot more of a scratchy line so that I can trick people into thinking I actually drew it and sketched it out. <laughs> There's a top tip to fool everybody. Now for these three middle leaves, I'm going to draw lines right through the center. Just the three that you can see fanning out the uh, the full shape of them. The rest are kind of hidden behind. And like we did with the leaf up here, I'm going to run those diagonal lines all the way through that. This can be a bit of a time consuming process, but I also find it very therapeutic. So if you just want to chill out, pop some music on, pop a YouTube video on or a playlist, I've kept this one very simple, but there are times where I'll take, you know, three of these cherry blossoms and each of them will have a different detail that might repeat six different times. I can get myself lost in that process because it's it's fun. To me, it's all there. The blueprint is there. I don't really have to switch my brain on for it. And let's be real. You could draw a leaf. Like, we could all draw a leaf. So I don't think when anyone's looking at your piece, they're going to be like, hmm... He cheated, or she cheated, she didn't draw that leaf, she stamped it. Like, you can draw a leaf! <laughs> so this is why I feel like people have been enjoying it, because you get to claim the success of the piece. You get to say, these were my ideas, this is how I put it together, this was the concept I created, this was how I detailed it out, this is how I outlined it, this is how I colored it. You know, the only thing that I provided you with is a base. It was a tool to get your imagination flowing your creativity in action. And I think you should 100% take credit for all of that. And be proud of yourself and proud to display that. I've seen samples of uh, my stamp sets used before that I just had no idea people use them. And it blows me away. But at the same time, it doesn't really surprise me because I know that all of these ideas are flying out there. I know everyone's got things that they would love to try and some people honestly don't have the time to try them. Some people don't have the patience to try them. Some people might just be missing one or two skills to, to, to really feel like they can try it. And since I know faces and bodies can be a little bit of a struggle. I like to approach them with stamping and, and help people that way. But what I think some of the biggest struggles that we face are actually having ideas. How many times have you sat there and thought, you know, when you're away from a piece of paper, you're away from your journal, you think, oh, I want to draw that or I should try drawing that. And then you either lose the inspiration to draw it and the motivation, or by the time you've come to draw it, you've forgotten and you're searching your brain for a new idea to draw because you've got 20 minutes that you want to sit down and have a nice little play, just de-stress, relax, get creative, and you sat there looking for an idea. I, I honestly, I struggle with this, and I'm someone whose brain never turns off. I don't, I don't think I struggle with it a lot, because it's kind of that, you know, creativity begets more, and since it's my full-time job, I just feel like it's on this perpetual loop, but there are definitely moments where I think, I, I can't even think of like a different hairstyle to draw. I've got one track mind. I, I've got horse blinders on. I can't see anything. There's tunnel vision. And so I think this really helps 
in the sense that I don't know what's going to happen until I actually start stamping it out. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but the process excites me. And then once I can see something emerging, I get to run with that. And suddenly there is a new idea. There's a new idea there. It's created. You don't have to worry about finding it in the back of your brain somewhere or searching for it on Pinterest. Like you can just run with that new concept that you have. So I'm hoping that that is what you really do get out of it. The uh, kind of exercising of your imagination, literally taking your imagination on a treadmill and saying, I don't know how far we're going to run, but we need to work out today. So let's just do all we can. <laughs> and I hope that the stamp set is kind of the uh, motivation that gets you on that treadmill. Is that a lot? I think it's a lot that I would use a gym metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell anyone, but I have been slightly off my health journey lately. I've been so paranoid this whole time because truth be told, I had flaming hot Cheetos and my fingers are stained <laughs> from the Cheeto dust. I didn't want to admit it, but I feel like honestly at this point, it's been so zoomed in that someone will have seen it and just thought maybe I had a fake tan disaster or Maybe I'm just that orange. No, it is flaming hot Cheeto dust. And I have Stella to thank for that. I never used to eat Cheetos. I'll have to plan when I eat them next and make sure that it's not near a day of filming. <laughs> <laughs> so all of these at the bottom, I'm gonna approach the same way. The same detailing that we did on the motifs up on the hair, I'm gonna do the same thing down to these ones here. So drawing in my lily pad, adding in my leaf details, drawing in my cherry blossom petal, adding in those, drawing out my leaves, and then my tiny leaves. Okay, that's all of our detailing done in our kind of uh, floral explosions we've got here. I'm gonna start adding in a little bit more of the detail around the face, which just looks like a lot of loose lines. I'm even gonna put some in the hair as well, remembering to add in my little kiss curls down here. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time shading this today, just keeping it very loose and just enjoying myself. No kind of photorealism going on here. At the corner of the mouth, I just wanna make note, if you want to turn this mouth up in the corner and add these kind of darker edges that just notch a little upwards, you'll give it a bit more of a pleasant, uh, sweet, smiley look. The mouth that I drew on the actual stamp is quite expressionless so that you could add that expression in yourself. So I just wanted to mention that just some tiny little notches on the side will make her a little bit more smiley. I'm gonna add lashes because I always add lashes. <laughs> really big ones. I'm gonna darken up the eyebrows a little bit. Getting towards the end, so I think you know what that means. White gel pen. Oh no, maybe this one's empty. This one will have to do. I actually think this one might be kind of empty too. I'm gonna add all my little white gel accents all over it. On the original I added white kind of freckles and speckles all over her face. So I'm gonna do that again here. Not all over her face, kind of all over the nose and the cheek area. And I did add some blue or teal in the eyes of the original as well. So I'm gonna add some of that in here and then go back in with my color Eno and just darken up any areas that I wanna add a little bit more vibrancy. Usually the lips, the cheeks, the nose and the eyes. I have an idea, but I oh, I just don't even know if it's going to be a good idea or not. But I know that this pen is water soluble. So I was just wondering if I just got a damp part of my brush and just tried to feather out some of this pen inside some of these leaves to add a little bit of extra dimension. I think that looks all right. I want to be careful not to do it too much though, because it will start to blur my lines. And I do like those lines to be a little bit more prominent. So I'm just going to try and move just little bits of it. My brush isn't even really wet either, it's just kind of damp. Just enough to scrape some of that dye loose. If you were stamping with a water-soluble ink, like a really water-reactive ink, you could also just stamp the whole thing out and essentially pull the ink around for your shadows. I think that would be fun. Yeah, that's nice. I think that gives that a little extra bit of dimension that it didn't have in the original. I'm glad we got brave and did that. <laughs> Otherwise I would have sat here and just thought, oh, what if? And you know what I think it makes me more inclined to do it on something like this? Is that they're stamps. I didn't spend hours drawing this. I could re-stamp this whole thing out and just do it again. It would take 30 minutes. I mean, if I wasn't talking, who knows how long it would take. <laughs> I think because they're stamps, they just make me want to play with them more, experiment more, conceptualize new ideas, build things. Honestly, I feel like a kid when I'm playing with them. I know it sounds stupid because they're just stamps, but it's my truth. I have to live in it. <laughs>
<laughs> there you go. The stamp series. This is the first episode. Episode? Am I really calling them episodes now? Like this is Netflix. <laughs> the first video in the series. Keep your eyes peeled for more of these concepts stamp series tutorials. If you haven't picked this up, there's a link down below to my Etsy store to grab one if they're still there. I don't know when you might be watching this, but if it's around the end of February 2019, you should be good. <laughs> like I said, don't have to buy it. You can live a great life without it. If you have stamp sets you could already do this with, please by all means go and do that. If you can just draw this and you want to draw it, just draw it. My goal is to get your imaginations exercising and your hands moving. That is all I care about and I hope you have fun doing it. So until next time, thanks for watching. Bye. So patiently, but...